Understanding market breadth is a crucial way to see what's truly happening beneath the surface of the market. It's not just about the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, what those indexes are doing. It's about the internals. It's about participation. Are the majority of stocks going up? Are the majority of stocks going down? What's really happening beneath the surface? Today, we're giving you some of the breadth charts that I absolutely would not go a week without reviewing. You're going to get these on your screen and in your account. It's all new. It's all here. It's Stock Charts in Focus. All right, my friends, welcome to the show, Stock Charts in Focus. I'm your host. My name is Grayson Rose. I am the author of Trading for Dummies and Director of Operations here at StockCharts.com. If you're new to the show, great to have you. Welcome, welcome. We do this every Friday, digging into tools and features around the site, but also talking about process, trading, investing, technical analysis, charting tips and tricks. There's so much that we cover on this show. So good to have you. Remember, check back Fridays for new episodes. By the way, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Stay up on all the great content that we're doing here on Stock Charts TV. Today, we're talking about a crucial, crucial uh, aspect of technical analysis, market analysis, especially for the current moment. This has been a hotly discussed topic, especially among accomplished uh, technical analysts market breadth is absolutely on fire something that we haven't seen actually in quite a while we saw this you know back in 2020 2021 when stocks were absolutely flying but in 2022 we saw breadth absolutely deteriorate no stocks making new highs participation just wasn't there uh, we saw everything moving to the downside now we're starting to see a bit of a change of character in the market you might have heard this before right you might have heard that term market breadth what does that actually mean we're going to discuss it on the show today and most importantly we're going to give you some charts we're going to show you how our sample chart gallery puts those charts directly in your hands things that folks like myself and dave keller and our other accomplished technicians the experts that you follow on stock charts and stock charts tv we have put these charts together they're straight out of our own process out of our own accounts and our sample chart gallery lets you pick them up start using them and save them to your own account we'll show you how all that works on the show today so let's jump over to stock charts and get it going with some sample charts so first and foremost starting here on our charts and tools page top left corner of any page around the stock charts website give that a click and scroll down this page this is a great directory of everything that is there of course you've also got quick access over on the right side of the screen but as you scroll down this page under the members only section you're going to find a card for our sample chart gallery something that we rolled out a little while ago and it just keeps getting better we continue to add charts to this on a regular basis so even if you've seen this resource in the past it might have changed on you give that blue link a click and that's going to take you right over the gallery so the whole point of this is to get charts into your hands you know there's a lot of setup a lot of learning a lot of things that go into building great charts on stock charts and to make it as easy as possible we want to give you some great charts that you can start using as is or start to customize and make your own so we've got different sections to this page. For instance, our popular chart style section will have things like a simple candlesticks chart, a simple OHLC bar chart, simple line chart, even a simple performance chart if you like that percentage scale. Also has things like John Murphy's chart. You can blow these up to actually see a full size version of them. So if you're curious about the John Murphy chart, there you go. Just give it a click and you can see that in sort of a full size. Of course, you also have those little descriptions down below. Now, for any of these, as you scroll through, if you want to start using one, all you have to do is look for that little blue button below, and that's going to take you right over to a live chart. Uh, so really, really easy to access these. But again, you've got a huge gallery to play with here. We've organized it into different sections. So we had popular chart styles. We've got different strategies, trading and investing strategies. We've got time frames, short all the way up to long-term monthly charts there. Uh, we've got specific trading styles, position trading, swing trading, things like that that you might have heard of. 
We've got a whole bunch of charts from the experts. If you're ever watching this show and you say, hey, I like those charts that Grayson has up on the screen, well, you can come over to the sample chart gallery, pick those up, and start using my sample chart style straight out of my own account. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of those experts on there. Then we get into some more kind of symbol specific things. So this is where we bring in some market analysis charts, things like intermarket analysis, a couple of interesting looks at different uh, market indexes. We've got Dave Keller's market trend model, a personal favorite of mine in this gallery. Uh, and offense and defense, actually another favorite of mine, uh, shows you some uh, some different metrics kind of getting into uh, to market internals. We've got mutual funds, bonds, and then the star of today's show, we have breadth. So we'll come back to that in just a sec. To round this out, volatility, economic indicators, fundamental indicators, you got a lot in here. And again, we continue to expand this page. So if you check it out one week, and you come back a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, whatever it is, the page has probably changed on you. We're going to continue to add charts to this uh, over time. A great example of that is actually our breadth section, recently expanded with some new breadth charts. So again, we covered this a little bit. What is breadth? The best way that I find to think about what market breadth is, it's participation. You're looking at the market, right? You're looking at the S&P 500. There are 500 stocks in that index. You might look at that number going up and down every day, thinking about what the S&P 500 itself is doing. But in reality, there are 500 individual stocks in that index. And you want to think about how many of those stocks are participating in the S&P 500's move. Something you've probably heard a lot about in the recent years is, oh, it's just a couple of names that are driving all these gains in the market. Well, breadth allows you to actually come up with an answer to that. Is that true? Is that not true? Breadth is about digging into those numbers and seeing what the participation in the underlying indexes is. Do we have a majority of stocks going up? Do we have a majority of stocks going down? Are the majority of stocks making new highs? The majority of stocks making new lows? What is the participation in these moves that we are seeing? So this just gives you kind of a nice intro to breadth. These charts, I would say, are uh, must look at if you want to think of it that way from uh, from week to week. Some of these you could even look at every day, but especially from week to week, understanding the internals of the market, understanding the participation of the market is absolutely crucial. So we've got a couple of different groups here. And as we go, we'll show you actually how to open these charts up. And uh, once we jump over the workbench, we'll show you how to save them to your own account as well. First up, though, I want to just kind of run through what these charts are. Now, the descriptions down below are going to give you a great sense of that. And even the titles are going to give you a great sense of what these are. So for the NYSE, for the NASDAQ, and for the S&P 500, we have percent of stocks above key moving averages. Let's look at this. We were talking about the S&P 500 a second ago. Let's look at this for the S&P 500. What this is going to do is chart the S&P 500 itself down below, and it's going to put the 50, the 150, and the 200-day moving average on this chart. This is a daily chart. Up top, though, this is going to show you rolling percentages of the number of stocks in that index, in the S&P 500 in this case, uh, that are trading above their own 50-day or 150-day or 200-day moving average. So we want to think about the number of stocks that are trading above those key moving averages in the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 is going up, but nothing is trading above its 50-day moving average, we know that that's pretty weak breadth. That, uh, that move is going to be driven uh, by some of the big, big names in that index. In this case, you can see that we've seen these lines rallying higher. We've seen uh, some, some big, big numbers finally out of these, uh, these breadth metrics here on the S&P 500. What we can see on the right side of this screen is we've got 85% right now of the S&P 500 trading above its 50-day moving average. We've got 89% of stocks in the S&P 500 trading above their 150-day moving average. And we've got, again, 85% of stocks in the S&P 500 trading above their own 200-day moving average. Those are very strong numbers, very high numbers, things that we like to see uh, when times are very, very bullish. If we brought this chart back all the way to 2022, we would see a very different story. Those numbers were down in the uh, in the teens at times even. Uh, so this, again, allows you to understand participation in these moves that you're seeing. It's not enough to just look at the S&P 500. We want to really understand the breadth story going on beneath the surface. So the great thing about these charts is that we have them for a couple of different indexes. So here we can do the exact same thing for the NASDAQ. Now, a little bit weaker in this case, that is actually 
one weakness of the NASDAQ from my perspective right now, we don't have that uh, overwhelming breadth like we're seeing out of something like the S&P 500. Obviously, more stocks in the NASDAQ, so that kind of makes sense. But in this case, we're seeing numbers in the 50s. Now, still trending in the right direction, heading higher. Uh, those numbers are quite a lot higher than what we saw even at the end of 2023. We had very, very weak breadth in the NASDAQ. Uh, trending in the right direction, still a little bit low. But again, the point is, this gives you a way to really dig into the surface. What's going on under the surface of the NASDAQ? Not enough to just look at the index itself. You have to think about what's happening beneath the surface at the individual stock level. So we have this breadth chart for the NASDAQ. We also have this for the NYSE. Now, you can get those charts by simply clicking on this blue button. We're going to show you that in just a sec once we run through the rest of these breadth charts. Next up, we've got the NYSE and the NASDAQ advancers and decliners on a daily basis. This is one that I actually love to look at uh, on a daily basis. This is something that's kind of on my morning list, uh, something that I uh, typically like to check in the morning and then also again at the close. So what this is going to show you, again, we've got the NYSE down below with the 50 and the 200 day moving average. But these panels up top are what you're going to be really focused on here. So each bar here, because this is a daily chart, each bar represents one day of trading. The top panel is the number of stocks in the NYSE that are advancing on the day, that are going up, that are moving, uh, moving higher. The bottom panel is the number that are doing the opposite, that are going down on the day, the number of declining issues in the NYSE. So we can tell on any given day what the participation in that move is. If you see that the NYSE is up by a couple, uh, couple points, but we've got absolutely no stocks advancing, it's just a kind of a trickle, that tells you something about the participation in that move. On the flip side, if you see a day when the NYSE is up a percent, let's say, and you've got huge, huge numbers up in the 80s or even in the 90s, we've got 90% of stocks in the NYSE trading higher on the day, that tells you something about the, uh, the sort of participation in that move, tells you something about the sentiment of investors, tells you something about how bullish that market really is. So you can sort of dig in again beneath the surface of the market, go to that next level. Don't just look at the index using some of these charts. Really gives you a better sense of what's happening beneath the surface. So again, advancers up top in green, and we've got decliners down at the uh, second panel in red for the NYSE. And we've got the same thing here for the NASDAQ, exact same chart. I love to look at those ones on a daily basis, find them very, very helpful for understanding what's happening from day to day. Finally, in a similar fashion to what we had with those percent above key moving averages, we've got new highs minus new lows for the NYSE, for the NASDAQ, and for the S&P 500. So what this is going to tell us is basically, are the majority of stocks making new highs or are the majority of stocks making new lows? Now, when times are bad, like in 2022, you're going to see a lot of red on these charts. You're going to see big, big red negative numbers. That means that there are more stocks making new lows than stocks making new highs. We're seeing stocks overwhelmingly decline instead of advance. Now, when times are good, for instance, right now, you're going to see this up in the black. In this case, that means the majority of stocks in the S&P 500 are making new highs. There are more stocks making new highs than making new lows. That tells us that the participation is going in the right direction. We've got a lot of stocks making new highs, and we can see that index down below in the lower panel. We can see the S&P 500 rising, and we can see the participation up top. More stocks making new highs than making new lows. That is a good thing if you are bullish. So we can do the exact same thing again for the NASDAQ and the exact same thing again for the NYSE. Now, again, this is just a sampling of some breadth charts that we want to put into your hands. We're going to continue to add more charts to this as we go over time. There are other uh, interesting things that we can add to this advanced decline line, some of the uh, McClellan oscillators, if you've ever heard of those. So check back soon. I'm sure that we'll be adding even more breadth charts. But the ones we've got here are crucial, absolutely vital things that you should be looking at every week in my book. Let's talk about how to bring these into your process, speaking of looking at them every week. So again, look for those blue buttons. Once you decide that you want to use one of these charts, what you're going to do is hit that blue button. It's going to open up in a new tab, and it's going to take you right over to the live chart on the Sharp Charts workbench. 
Now from here, it's a real chart. You can change the symbol if you want. In this case, that's not gonna do you too much good, uh, but you can edit these settings, you can do anything, and you can also learn about how these charts were actually set up. So when you scroll down to the bottom of the workbench, you can actually see all of the different settings that were used to create this chart. You can see how we added these three price indicators up at the uh, top of the chart. We positioned those above the primary price panel. We've got the, uh, the ticker symbols for those in there for the uh, percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 above those specific moving averages. So we've got those ticker symbols in there. And then we've styled those in this case with a solid thick line in a couple of different colors to kind of be consistent from, uh, from chart to chart. So this is a great way to get good charts. It's also a great way to learn more about setting up good charts. You can actually kind of poke around at some of these settings and see how these charts were created. Uh, we've also got those moving averages on there, a couple other interesting little setup tricks to these. So this is a great way to, uh, to see exactly how these charts were created. Now, from here, you've got a couple of different things that you can do. Uh, for, in a, for a chart like this, that's really more about kind of studying exactly what this chart is with these specific symbols, this is the type of thing that I would say you gotta save to a chart list. So in this case, you can actually hit save up here at the top and select any of the chart lists out of your account. Now, I would highly recommend creating a market evaluation chart, things that you wanna look at maybe on a weekly basis or even on a daily basis. In my case, you can see all of these different lists. I've got a whole bunch of different chart lists in my account that are dedicated to analyzing the market. They're not about my positions or new trade targets, anything I'm looking at on my watch list. I've got uh, dedicated chart lists that are focused on evaluating the market. They have charts of the different indexes, they have breadth charts, sentiment charts, volatility charts, intermarket analysis, lots and lots of good stuff like that. So I would recommend setting up a chart list, call it market evaluation or whatever makes sense to you. And from there, you can select that chart list here and save this chart directly to your own account. That's gonna make it easy for you to pull up at any point in the future. You don't actually have to go through that sample chart gallery. Again, this is a chart that you can take with you. You can use this in your own process, in your own account, save it to a chart list in your own account and you'll be off to the races. The other thing that you can do, speaking of these sample charts, if we actually close this out and go sort of back up to the top, for any of these other charts that are here in the sample gallery that are more symbol agnostic, we'll call it, something like the John Murphy chart. We previewed this earlier, right? This is John Murphy's chart out of his own account. This is exactly the set of indicators that he likes to use in his process. You can open this up in the Sharp Charts workbench, and instead of saving this specific chart to a list, what you might want to do with a chart like this is save it as a template so that you can use these settings with any other symbol that you want. If you change it to something like Microsoft, you can see that we're going to keep those settings around and you can actually start to use this as sort of your default chart. If you like John's work, you want to do things that are uh, similar to John Murphy, one of the legends of technical analysis, this is a great way to pick up that sample chart that we've created bring it over to the Sharp Charts workbench and start using it as your own. Now, you can also save this template to your own account. Easy to do that as well. Down here at the bottom of the page, you can look for that green button in the settings area that says Save Chart Style. Once you do that, you can give it a name, you know, John Murphy style or my default style, whatever you wanna name it. And once you hit save, you'll be able to use that as a template in your own account for any of the charts that you're using on the workbench. This is a great way to bring new chart templates into your process. Now, once you do that, you can also access those chart styles from up here. So in this case, you can see all of the different chart styles that are in my account. I have a ton of them. I've got lots and lots of reasons for why I have so many chart styles. Uh, but the point is you can save these chart styles, save these chart templates, if you will, uh, to your own account. And the sample chart gallery is a great way to find some of those charts that you might wanna use. Now, in this menu, you got one other option. Up here at the top, you also have a save new button. So that's another great place to go. You don't actually have to scroll all the way down. If you pick up any of these sample charts from the gallery, you can save those chart styles to your account uh, from that menu up top as well. So a great way to find new charts here in the sample chart gallery. Uh, this has quickly become one of those resources that I love pointing new users to 
or even folks that have been using stock charts for a very, very long time. There is a ton here. It is a great way to find interesting charts, useful charts, helpful charts, different things that you might want to start using in your own process. Uh, one, for instance, is this quarterly moving averages chart. So each moving average here represents a rolling uh, sort of one quarter. So we've got uh, one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, and four quarters worth of trading history. We've got moving averages that are basically uh, tied to those periods. And you can see sort of, uh, you know, one, two, three, or four quarters worth of trading history on a rolling basis. Really, really interesting little moving average chart there and a great way to think about uh, business cycles and things like that. So lots and lots to discover in here. I'm going to leave you guys to go play with this, explore it, and let us know what is uh, what's sticking out to you. What do you like? What are you using? Uh, what are you still looking for? Let us know down in the comments below. Leave us a comment and tell us how you're using the sample chart gallery, which ones you like, uh, which ones that you have picked up and started using in your own process uh, from this sample chart gallery. So that is our show for today, digging into breadth, digging into participation charts, talking about the importance, why you need to dig into those internals and understand what's happening, not just at the index level, but beneath the surface, really understanding the participation of the stocks within these indexes, a crucial, crucial way to analyze the markets. You got to understand the next level down. You got to take those sectors and industries, look at those, but understanding breadth, understanding the internals of the market, a fantastic, fantastic boost to your process really helps you understand the uh, the cycles in the market as well uh, and helps you get it, uh, ahead of uh, specific moves when you see a market that is continuing to cruise higher but the breadth is starting to fall off a cliff and we're just not seeing the participation that tells you something about what might be coming down the pike so great tool uh, to uh, to really take your market analysis to the next level. If you've had fun with me on the show today, remember we do this every Friday here on the channel, digging into the site, tools and resources, but also talking process, talking investing and trading, uh, things out of my own process, uh, tips and tricks. There's so much that we cover on this show. We're always having fun, always getting creative. So uh, join me for, uh, for another episode soon. Remember, hit that subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, turn that notification bell on. We've got so much fantastic content here on the Stock Charts TV channel. So don't miss it. Remember to subscribe. Remember to turn that notification bell on as well. Again, my name is Grayson Rose, author of Trading for Dummies and Director of Operations here at StockCharts.com. Fantastic as always to be with you. I'll see you again soon for another one. But until then, chart on, my friends. <laughs>